Hello, my name is Allison, and I'm here to highlight Nime's newest Python features. I am joined today by two of the developers of this feature, Karsten and Adrian, who are going to help walk me through this a bit more. Now, over to you. Thanks, Allison. Really excited to show you what we have in store for you today, because it could actually have a big impact on the future of Nime. OK, that's a, that's a bold <laughs> statement. Yeah. What makes you say that? <laughs> well, Nime as a data science tool offers already a lot of functionality. We have thousands of nodes out there in the Nime Hub. <clears throat> and right now, all of those nodes are written in, Python, in, in Java. And uh, the, but the Python community actually has a lot of nice toolkits for data science, for machine learning, for deep learning out there. And they're releasing updates all the time. And um, it would be hard to integrate those via Java somehow. But um, wouldn't it be cool if we could do this from Python directly. And that's exactly what we're about to do with this release. We're offering a new um, integration so they can write Nime extensions in Python directly. And you don't even have to write a single line of Java code around that. And well, voices say that uh, this is even easier than writing Nime notes in Java. All right, throwing down the gauntlet <laughs> a little bit there, but <laughs> I will believe it when I see it. So do you guys have a demo or something you could show me? Yes, yes of course. <laughs> okay. uh, we brought something uh, for you to check out. So here we have two nodes written purely in Python. So here on the right hand side, you have the Python file. And as you see, it's not that long. I mean, it's like 115 lines. Um, I guess there's a lot more in a Java uh, file, at least if you have everything included. Um, uh, but how you actually define your nodes in Python is uh, as classes. So in this case, we have a linear regression learner class, and it is announced to Nime as being a node via this decorator, uh, which is the node decorator, which tells us, OK, this node has a name, it has a certain type, an icon, and it is located in, located in a category. And you can actually define your own categories with icons and description and everything using just uh, Python. But I'm um, getting a bit ahead of myself. Um, so back to the nodes. Um, a node also often has an input and an output, or multiple inputs and outputs. So in this case, we have an input table, and we have an output binary, which will just contain the learned model parameters um, that this node learns. And this node also has a view. Um, and besides those things, a node usually also has some kind of settings or parameters. Here we have two parameters, which are um, one column parameter for the column that kind of contains the feature that we learn on, and one that contains the target, kind of the x and the y for the regression. Um, and from that, we actually already get our dialog. So if we open that up here, then uh, we kind of get this small dialog, but you can kind of create much more elaborate dialogues with this. And this is just generated from the Python that we have written here. Uh, with these few lines of code. A lot easier than in Java again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll concede it is looking a bit easier. But what about when you get to the real meat of the node, when I want to execute something? How do I tell Python I want to execute this algorithm as a Nine node? Good question. I mean, Nine nodes still have to follow the same pattern as a Java, uh, well, as they do in Java. In Python, it looks the same. You need a configuration and an execution method. It, Configuration of a Nime node means uh, you get the information about the inputs, meaning for a table, what columns it has, so which type the column have, uh, has, and which uh, name, and so on. Um, and <clears throat> you need to provide the same thing for the output. So if Adrian shows you this for um, the node here, there we actually append a new column to the, the table and say that this has type double and a name predictions. And uh, that's what you need to do during configuration. And during execution, obviously, you need to do the number crunching. So you get the full table with access to all the data, and or here also the, the trained model. And then you can select, uh, you can retrieve the data from the table, for instance, as a pandas data frame, if you're used to using that, and select the column from that data frame, namely the column that we've selected using the parameter that Adrian showed before. Um, and then you can predict on that column using the trained model, create, add the predictions as a column to your table, and convert that table to a nine table again. And that's what we expect as an output if you have a table output board. 
And that's all you need to do for a full-fledged name node. So now it can actually execute inline. All right, yeah. <laughs> it's looking pretty good from a development standpoint. But what about if I want to then share this node with other people, with users? Does the end user have to do anything special to use now these nodes written in Python? What's that look like? Well, they have to install it, of course, just like any other Lime extension. Um, you can uh, kind of get it from an update side. Of course, if you write your own node, that's not on the Lime update side yet. But we made it really easy to just create your own update site using a rather simple script that will then kind of produce this update site. You can give this to your colleagues or friends. They can point Lime to that update site and just install the node and or actually the extension. I mean, you could write 20 nodes <laughs> in no time if you wanted to. And the cool thing is that those nodes or this extension comes batteries included. This means it even contains a Python environment to run with. So for the end user, it's really hard to tell the difference. Am I running something written in Java? Am I running something written in Python? That's kind of the main goal that we have with this whole feature. Yeah. So to wrap this up, what we are adding with this release is actually um, allowing you to write a complete Lime extension fully in Python. So you don't have to worry with Java code and um, you don't have to bother with a lot of boilerplate. And this is really cool because it opens up Lime to a lot of new people who haven't been able to share their toolkits with Lime users before. Um, and <clears throat> so we're really curious to see what you are going to do with this. Um, and uh, if you have any suggestions, questions, want to talk to us about those new features, please go to the Nine Forum in the development subcategory.